Yo, what's good, my friends? So recently, this happened. And I couldn't be happier about this. 10,000 subscribers, man, this is just bonkers. So thank you very, very much to every single one of you who decided to press the sub button and support me not only on this Gumpla journey, but also the YouTube journal and a journal journey. <laughs> And uh, to celebrate, I thought I would do an AMA video. And so I took to Instagram and also the community tab of this channel and uh, asked you to hand in some questions. And here are the answers. Enjoy. I've been watching anime ever since, I don't know when, maybe 1998. So yeah, that's a really tough one to answer. But here are some that stuck with me ever since and that I would always recommend to people. This is in no particular order by the way. So uh, Monster, Neon Genesis Evangelion, both the original show and the rebuilt movies, Bubblegum Crisis, Hajime no Ippo, Cowboy Bebop, Haikyuu, Vinland Saga, Attack on Titan of course. Yeah, I, I could go on and on. But to name one show that comes pretty close to what I would call my favorite anime show would be Tengen Toppa Guren Lagan. That absolutely out of this world mecha show with crazy characters, fights, emotions, tragedy, it just has everything. That was Gainax at its best. If we're talking Gundam shows, then it's a tie between MS8 Team and War in the Pocket, I would say. Gundam The Origin comes very close after those two. Char's origin story is one of the best across all types of media. I've always been a lover of Japanese RPGs ever since I played Secret of Mana with my brother when we were kids. The image of us sitting on the living room floor in front of the TV beating the spiky tiger for the first time and hugging each other and screaming out of pure relief and joy is one image of my childhood that I can still relive very vividly and a dear memory to me. If I had to pick a number one game, then it would be Xenogears all day and every day. This game holds this number one spot because of its epic story that touches on so many topics of existentialism, spirituality and identity, paired with lovely pixel graphics, beautiful artworks, a fighting game like battle system and not to forget Mitsuda's soundtrack make for an unforgettable gaming experience despite from suffering production problems. Close runner-ups are of course Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI and VII. If we're talking next-gen games, I like Sekiro a lot. I finished uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth the other day. So those two remake games are up there as well. Yakuza 0 is also a very great game. I love the compelling storytelling and the voice acting uh, especially. There's a bunch of games I hold dear, but Xenogears will always stay on top. One interesting tidbit that probably only few know, I used to be a somewhat semi-pro fighting game player. I call it semi-pro because it was during a time where online play and esports were still in their infancy. I used to play a lot of Street Fighter Alpha 3 and Third Strike during the early 2000s and traveled across the country to attend tournaments. I even went to Evolution once, albeit uh, just as a spectator. But uh, yeah, thank you for that question. The only builds I did prior to this channel were straight builds. I tried Tamiya's spray can once and did a master grade ale strike with them. I was pretty clueless during that time since YouTube was practically non-existent and I had no other sources of information than random websites. After all, my first kid was from 2006 or 7, I can't really remember. I didn't know about Reddit or anything like that for that matter. So it was all about trial and error and the fear of ruining a kit kept me from experimenting too much. On top of that, getting your hands on Gumpla was so tough back at that time. I had to import all the kits from Hobby Link Japan and each time import taxes skyrocketed the prices for a single kit. As the poor student that I was, there was no way I could risk ruining the kits by attempting any kinds of customization. I wouldn't know how anyways because of aforementioned reasons. As for what pushed me to start the channel, um, this channel used to be a toy photography channel. Uh, there is probably no one here anymore who subbed during that time. I got into this toy photography bubble through Shardimus Prime, Anthony Customs or Pixel Dan if that rings a bell with anyone. 
I collected a lot of SH figure arts through Voltec and Figma action figures at that time and did a lot of toy photography, I think uh, 2015. You can still see my attempts on my Instagram. At some point I tried my hands at some videos as well, it didn't get very far though, somehow it never clicked. So instead I turned to streaming retro games and speedrunning on Twitch in 2017, which was an unforgettable time. I have really good memories of that time and met amazing people through Twitch, some of whom I still hang out with today. But when Covid hit the world, I got more and more into building Gunpla again. At that time I watched a lot of EA Gunpla and Studio G. I know some of you might get triggered by that name, yeah, so let's not go into that one here. Nevertheless, those videos were really inspiring and well crafted. I wanted to try my hands on creating my own videos in my own style, experimenting with ideas, trying out new things. You have to know, I work in video production and motion design, but oftentimes your creativity gets limited by the client's briefings, so I wanted my own creative playground, and that is when Giant Robolov was born. Thanks so much for taking an interest in my motivations. I think I have to go with the Evangelion here. The kit itself is so wonderfully crafted with such intricate engineering, it's so impressive. While I don't like the crotch section too much because it's just too loose, I love the spine section all the more. That human anatomy is just mind blowing. I also have to pick this kit because it combines all the skills that I always wanted to try and learn and that is implementing LEDs and casting with resin and to this day I love the outcome so much. If you're wondering why I haven't mentioned the real grade high new or any sorts of master grade or perfect grade then this is simply because I haven't built them yet. Apart from the builds you've seen here on the channel there are maybe only other 10 kits that I made in the past prior to this channel. But the ones I do build, I put extra care into and I hope to add more in the future. All the recent kits that I built were quite enjoyable I have to say. I do believe to remember that I didn't like the build process of the Master Grade Zaku 2, the Black Tristar. But that might have been due to my lack of experience. I built this one way back then when I was still new to the hobby. 2009 or something, I can't really remember. It always depends on the type of project. Diorama videos always take more than just straight custom build videos. I'm also always trying to implement and learn something new with each build. So the learning process of that technique will take extra time. For instance, the Evangelion build I mentioned earlier took very long because I needed to learn how to solder LEDs and how to handle resin properly. For the Estray diorama, which uh, was my first diorama, I built a DIY static grass applicator and needed to learn basic terrain application skills. So each new project brings new challenges and overcoming them takes time. And this is just the build process itself. When it comes to the video production side of things, sometimes I want some nice editing too and then of course that will take its time. For instance, the intro scene for the char diorama took a week alone to make. The horror skit in the Goof custom build also took its fair share of extra work since I did some 3D compositing stuff. If I had to give an estimate, then it's never below 80 hours in total for both building and editing. So with a full time job, this explains why it takes so long for me to release a video. I would love to up the frequency, but as of now, it's just impossible. But I genuinely love the process of filmmaking and editing. This channel is my creative playground and as such I like to take my time to make sure that my ideas are well executed in the exact way that I envisioned them in my head. Okay so that's a deep one. Generally I like to walk through life so that I won't regret the decisions that I make because I believe that whatever choice you make in life even if you think that at one point it might have been the wrong one, things will always turn out fine in the end. So I like to not think back and move forward. I truly believe that if life gives you lemons, you have to open a lemon stand and make lemonade. Since I suppose you want something specific, uh, this might be too crude, but sometimes I wish I would have started earlier with this channel. 
because creating something out of nothing and sharing it with like-minded people is such a rewarding feeling, I feed off that feeling. It's like a healthy drug that keeps you moving forward. I have to be honest, uh, I don't really remember anymore, but from what I've told you before, all my favorite anime shows and games had giant robots in them, so I've always been into robots. So I guess that at some point I just came across Gundam Seed, gave it a try and got hooked and from there on out it was just a matter of time until I learned about Gumpla. Needless to say my first kit was the Master Grade Airstrike and yeah the rest is history. If you're starting from zero and want to explore the hobby to see if this is something for you, then uh, a simple nipper, a hobby knife, one panel line marker and top coat would be suffice. Maybe some plastic cement to glue broken pieces, but yeah, this should be a good package that will enable you to create good results. Never underestimate a kit with clean panel lines and flat top coat. The flat top coat will take away the plasticky shine of the pieces and give it a more refined look. With a hobby knife you will be able to clean up any knob mark residues and with a panel line marker you will be able to practice pen control and learn to work in fine details. I think if you build two or three kits uh, with that setup you will slowly start to develop a feeling for the parts and the workflow especially. By now, if you're still hooked, you can expand into more specific tools and explore some intermediate techniques. No need to break the bank from the get-go. I know it's tempting. It's like being a new photographer wanting to buy all those extra lenses, camera straps, tripod and whatnot. You know the acronym GAS? Gear Acquisition Syndrome? That is real in any type of hobby, so yeah, don't, don't fall for it. Uh, yeah, this question has been asked quite often in the past and uh, I've always been a bit hesitant about this if I'm honest because I think I won't be able to take care of it as much as I would like to. You already know that I'm very slow with my videos on this channel. Because I work very thoroughly and devote a lot of time to them, I fear that a Discord channel would suffer from this. But since there have been so many requests and since I would also like to give something back to you for your support, I'm very happy to announce that I did open a Discord server and it's open for you to join. You can find the link in the description. So yeah, let's meet up and talk about our favorite plastic addiction. So there you have it. I hope I was able to answer all your questions to your satisfaction. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who handed in the questions. The little dude that I was building in the video he will make a reappearance in one of the later videos, so keep an eye peeled out for that. Yeah, so uh, all that is left for me to say is once more, thank you. I, I can't uh, stop repeating myself. Um, your likes, your subs, uh, your shares, your comments, uh, this means uh, so much to me. I made the videos, but you, you are the ones who made the channel into what it is today. So once more, thank you and um, I will see you in the next one. Take care.